Good evening. I'm Mariah Guzman. And I'm Patrick Cazone. We are so happy to bring you the final installment of Illini Sports Night for the semester. But first and foremost, may the fourth be with you, Mariah. And with you as well, question mark? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how to respond there, although I am a Star Wars fan, so I totally appreciate the sentiment there. But Patrick, we have to get to the exciting weekend that Illinois sports had, Big Ten Championships. And yes, that was plural. Oh yes, we're going to kick it off with golf. Not one, not two, not three. Make that six consecutive Big Ten Championships for the men's golf team and 11 in the last 12 years. For head coach Mike Spall, the Illini narrowly edged out the Iowa Hawkeyes by a single stroke on Sunday to capture the trophy. Adrian Dumont de Chassart was Illinois' top finisher and tied second for the tournament at two strokes over par. The Illini will find out where they will be headed for the NCAA tournament tomorrow on the NCAA Golf Championship Selection Show. Yeah, and just seven minutes after that, men's tennis competed in their own Big Ten tournament and earned their championship as well. The Illini went into the tournament as a two-seed and defeated Indiana in their first match. Illinois defeated Michigan in the semifinals and advanced to the Big Ten championship where they would see Ohio State. The Illini's only loss in conference play and apparently one of their biggest rivals too. The Illini got on the board first with the doubles point but started slow in singles play. After Sif, oh, I'm so sorry, I totally butchered that name. Monsi and Alex Brown lost their matches. Noe Cliff and Hunter Heck tied up the Buckeyes at three. It all came down to fifth year senior Zeke Clark, who defeated Kyle Sealing in a third set tiebreaker after the Illini and their ninth conference title. Um, Zeke Clark was named the tournament MVP. And we'll take a look at the fun celebration that happened after the game, and too. And willed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm at a loss for words, really. Zeke, Mark Bay yeah. here, and you're getting a bath, too. Yeah. Well deserved. So. What, you know about that? what are sports championships without Gatorade showers, if anything? And on Monday, after they kind of got over the entire championship, head coach Brett Dancer got emotional talking about it and talking about senior Zeke Clark and just what that entire moment was like. At 4-3 down in the tiebreaker, uh, Marcos turned to me and he said, he just looked at me, he goes, no more tactics. He goes, just go machismo on him the rest of the way. And uh, tear it up again. <laughs> so, but, you know, he just, uh, so we just started yelling at him, you know, hit it big and be big and, Rattle off four points in a row. Now the team looks towards the NCAA tournament where the Illini are the number 16 seed. Illinois will compete this weekend at the Atkins Tennis Center against DePaul. And now on to our quick hits of the night. The NFL draft started on Thursday and Illini fans got to hear a friendly name in the third round. In the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Kendrick Green, Center, Illinois. Cleveland, I love you. Uh oh, DMC better run. Former Illini Kendrick Green was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And as you saw, Steelers mega fan DMC of Run DMC got to announce that pick. So it was very exciting in that moment watching it. DMC, of course, you know, had the booze, but the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer still said he loved Cleveland, and I was definitely here for that moment. And here's Kendrick Green's moment of getting that call. Hello. What up, Coach? Some exciting stuff. Green was a consensus first team All Big Ten and the USA Today second team All American. And in the fifth round, the Oakland Raiders took cornerback Nate Hobbs. Here's that moment recorded from the home. Okay. Okay. Let's go! Hobbs finished go! his Illinois career with 12 and a half tackles for loss and three interceptions. Hobbs went under the radar during the season but pulled off an impressive pro 
Pro Day highlights highlighted by a 438 40-yard dash and a 40 and a half inch vertical. Bri, I can't even get close to that, but I'm glad <laughs> Nate Hobbs can and he can represent the Illini in the NFL. Patrick, we've covered it plenty of times throughout the season. You can't dance. I don't even think you should even attempt that or you would break or pull something or everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Mariah. I think you're right. Well, there were two more Illini that were signed as undrafted free agents. Both Milo Eifler and Josh Bebe were signed to NFL rosters. Eifler was picked up by the New York Jets, while Bebe was signed to the Jacksonville Jaguars, where he may even be catching passes from the number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence. Wouldn't that be a sight to see? Eifler saw a strong junior season with the Illini and finished his two-year career at Illinois with 90 tackles and 13 and a half tackles for loss. On the other side, Bebe was a deep threat for Illinois the last two years and finished his career at Illinois with 931 yards and 12 touchdowns. And despite having games against Northwestern yesterday and Sunday canceled because of the weather, Illinois baseball saw its fair share of action on the weekend. The Illini and Michigan combined for 78 runs in a span of just over 24 hours. Illinois took the first game in each doubleheader on Saturday and Sunday with the Wolverines winning both the afternoon contests. But runs weren't the only story of the weekend. Third baseman Jackson Raper hit for the cycle in the first matchup on Sunday, going four for five with seven RBIs and two runs scored. He's the first Illini player to hit for the cycle since Justin Parr did so back in 2013 against Purdue. And it's just the fourth in the last 32 years. Riper leads Illinois in home runs, doubles, RBI, slugging percentage, and walks. The Illini moved to 15 and 16 on the year. And that's all we have for quick hits, but we do have our first half of the new anchors for Illini Sports Night this coming fall. I have standing next to me Anthony Pasquale, who is a good friend, so I'm so excited about you stepping into this role. And you've covered Illinois sports for a long time, so what's going to be exciting or what are you looking forward to when you look at ISN in the fall? Yeah, like you said, it. I've been around Illinois sports a lot in my first three years here as a student, and I'm just really looking forward to be a part of this team. You guys have done a great job in the past, and I just hope I can be a, a big part of telling and giving more stories to the viewers. And what are some things you've done in terms of covering Illinois sports? Yeah, I've done writing for football, basketball, and baseball on the Champagne Room, and then done Big Ten Student U announcing for baseball, basketball, volleyball, soccer, et cetera. And you guys might know me as the Schmack guy. Uh, <laughs> the Schmack will be back on ISN. I feel like you're really talking yourself up there. Like, my, maybe not everybody knows you maybe as the Schmack bit. guy, but we'll bet I'll give it to it's you. It's right here on the tie clip. Oh, it's on his tie clip. It is, it is right quite there. quite literally Schmack. engraved there. We <laughs> <laughs> well... You know, that's exciting because we're also, we might get a sneak peek of you and um, a, a story later on, so that's also exciting. So not only will be people able to listen to you on a broadcast for baseball games, but now they'll actually get to see the face to the schmack. There it is. <laughs> Patrick, who do you have over there? Yeah, and our other anchor is Brendan Jones. Brendan, you did WPGA, yeah. WPGU radio, excuse mm -hmm. me, and now moving on to television. Mm -hmm. What is that move going to be like for you? Man, I'm, I'm so used to talking in front of microphones. It's going to be a little different talking in front of the camera. Um, but I'm super excited to work with this group, the Schmack guy over there who's just talking, Gabby and right. Alec that will be introduced later. Very, very excited to continue the work that you guys have done uh, for the past couple of years on the show. That's awesome. And I know, you know, the saying is, you know, the face for radio. But I got to say, <laughs> Brendan, you have the face for television. Thanks, so I'm man. glad you're joining I the team. I appreciate it. And you've, you've covered many, many sports here at U of yeah. I. I'm just kind of mm -hmm. curious, what, what were some of your favorites that you've done? I think my favorite sport coming into cover was when I was a freshman. I was covering wrestling. Um, that team is, is so determined at what they do. Uh, I was covering when Coach Heffernan was the coach. He just recently retired. Uh, great guy. Um, was really good to the journalists in there. So um, that was nice to come in as a freshman and cover a team like that. Uh, and that's probably the, my favorite team that I've covered so far. Absolutely. We loved Huff Hall, too. Yeah, I, for I, sure, for sure. Great place to watch a game. Well, make sure you stay tuned because coming up after the break, We'll catch up with Riley Gallons of Illinois Baseball and meet the rest of our anchor crew.
Don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. plan today. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. <laughs> Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a pair of cat dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope I don't have another bad day at school, school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Welcome back. A weekend ago, Illinois baseball made history when they faced Purdue to throw a combined no-hitter. Riley Gowans, who started that game and threw seven innings, is joining us now live on Zoom. Riley, how are you doing, and has that moment officially set in for you yet? Hi, guys. Yeah, uh, I'm doing pretty well. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I think right when the game ended, it kind of hit. It was like, wow, we really just did that. But obviously with it being like the thick of the season, there are a lot of other things to focus on. Um, so I think the team has put that the rest of the season ahead of the no-hitter. And kind of once the season ends, I think it'll be a good time to look back and reflect on what a cool moment that really was. Yeah, well, what's it been like to get all the media attention as well as like, you know, attention from family? Like was your phone blowing up and stuff or? Yeah, I woke up uh, the morning after and I had like 150 Twitter notifications. Like it was a ton. All the interviews and stuff is really cool. I think I'm just really trying to make, do a good job of not letting it get to my head because um, I haven't had this type of attention since high school because I hadn't really played that much up until now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to keep it from getting to my head and locking it on the rest of the season. And Riley, would you consider this the biggest moment in your baseball career this far? Um. It's probably the coolest thing I've done. I mean, I've never been a part of a no-hitter before. I've been close in high school a couple of times. It's definitely one of the cooler individual achievements, but I don't think anything comes close to committing to Illinois and getting a scholarship to come play here for the coaches. That was a really cool moment. Um, but this is definitely going to be up there. And obviously a huge moment for you because you had Tommy John surgery. You know, it's been quite the comeback. What was it like just healing from that and, you know, having this big moment, but now finally really being able to get into a full season? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's really cool. Um, obviously, Tommy John is a lot. I mean, there were so many times in my rehab process that I never even thought I'd be playing here. Um, there were so many low points when I could barely throw a baseball. My elbow was stiff. My elbow was hurting. And I was like, wow, like I may never even play again. And then obviously to be able to have a moment like that with the no hitter, just being able to play with my best friends is a really cool moment um, in general. So, I mean, there were so many ups and downs that I was never even thinking about throwing a no-hitter or starting for Illinois. Like, it was all about being healthy, and just to be able to be here is really a good moment. Yeah, and I want to talk a little bit about that no-hitter. What was it like to pitch those seven hitless innings and then rely on the bullpen uh, to finish off the no-hitter? Yeah, um, I mean, once it got to the bullpen, I had full confidence. Um, we had a lot of fresh arms, just because we haven't been played in a while. We had some really good starts Friday and Saturday, so we had some fresh wings. Um, but yeah, obviously, I would have liked to finish the game, but 
being at 95 pitches with a new elbow, it was probably smart to take me out with the lineup. They've already seen me three times, so it would have been the fourth time through. But yeah, when O'Hara and Kirsch came in to finish the game, I knew we had unlocked. Yeah, and, and typically when you know pitchers are throwing that no hitter, they go back uh, to the dugout and nobody talks to him. Were you was it dead silent from seven, eight, nine as well, or people like great job? What was it like in that dugout? Uh, I'm not really one of those guys who needs like the silence. Like, we got some guys who like to kind of like stay in the corner, like just like focus on the game. But I like to just kind of stay loose, talk to the guys, and just kind of like enjoy being there. Um, it kind of keeps me locked in instead of sitting down and thinking too much for whatever reason. So for me, no, like I was talking to a bunch of the guys staying loose and that eighth and ninth inning, no one was really even thinking about the no hitter because it was obviously zero zero. Like everyone was kind of focused on how intense the game was and uh, what moment we were at in the game uh, score wise. So no one was even thinking about the no hitter until I think it was done. Riley, after the no hitter in Dan Hartlip's press conference, he said his biggest job in that moment was to sit back in the dugout and be quiet. What do you think about Dan saying that, first of all? but also his coaching process throughout that game. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, he's really hands-on with us at practice, and he does a really good job, uh, whether it's de defense, hitting, pitching, whatever he's working with. He does a good job being hands-on at practice, but then he does a great job during the game just kind of letting us be us. Um, like, if you have a coach who's trying to micromanage everything you do, it's just not going to be fun. And I think he realizes that, and he wants us to have fun, wants us to have success. So I think him – kind of do it, having that hands-off role during the game, just like all our coaches, um, having a hands-off role and just kind of letting us be us is big. I mean, you're not going to see stuff like that happen when a, when if he were to talk to me between each inning, micromanaging my pitches and stuff like that, it, stuff, stuff like that could never happen. So I think he does a really good job. I mean, he's obviously been doing it for a long time, so he knows what he's doing. But the way he manages is really good. And you got four more series left in the year. How are you feeling about the rest of the season? Uh, individually, obviously, I'm super confident. Um, as a team-wise, though, I mean, we got, uh, obviously, with the Big Ten having 15 less games than the rest of the country because of all the COVID stuff, we've already been kind of put behind the ball. Um, so we really got to make them some ground these last four weeks. We got some good matches with Iowa. Um, I don't know who got this upcoming weekend. I think we got – oh, we got Maryland, who's won as a sixth straight. So we got some good opportunities to kind of finish out the season pretty well and hopefully get our name in there for a regional, uh, regional bid. But – like I said, we're kind of behind the balls because of everything that's happened. So if we finish strong, hopefully uh, we can make some noise. But we're just going to do what we can to win these games. Thanks, Riley, for joining us. And hope you get to enjoy the rest of the season. Definitely looking forward to it. And up next, we'll take a look at a broadcaster that has also been mentoring uh, young aspiring broadcasters, uh, including one of our new very own, Anthony Pasquale. Alana Sports Night's Carson Gordy tells us more. And the first pitch swing, Hunter skies one to deep left field, but did not get all of it. With over a decade in the field, Scott Sudikoff has found a new home in Urbana-Champaign, broadcasting Illinois wrestling, basketball, and baseball events for BTN+. Even though he's trying to build up his own brand, Scott has used the position to help out other student broadcasters that he partners with, calling several baseball games over the weekend. Scott gave up 15 innings of play-by-play -play to his broadcast partner. And I know that Anthony in particular wants to be a, wants to be a baseball play-by-play -play guy, you know, in his career. So I think getting these reps is, is important. Big small ball weekend. And one home run, right, in these three games. Anthony Bisquale, who dreams of calling games for a living, was grateful for the opportunity. And he enjoys working with Scott. He was impressed by the way the veteran was able to prepare for each game, and he claims that Scott only uses a fraction of the information that he consumes before each broadcast. I hope he gets a play-by-play -play shot somewhere because the, the type of effort that he puts in day-by-day, game-by-game for a college broadcast with a student um, is, is very noticeable. While Scott enjoys his current gig, he wants a shot at a major network. In order to reach that ultimate goal, Scott preaches and follows through on the idea of being flexible. Don't say no to any gig. If you want to make it in the business, you say yes. Because that might be the doorway to something bigger. I'm Carson Gordy, Illini Sports Night. Nice to see a little sneak peek there of our very own Anthony Pasquale calling a game. Uh, and I, I've never done uh, BTN Student U, but I know, Mariah, you have. 
uh, seems like a really great opportunity for young broadcasters. Yeah, definitely a good opportunity. Do you think that there's a chance that we'll ever see Anthony uh, broadcasting Cubs games? I, I sure hope so. I, I would love <laughs> to see him on marquee. I'll tell you that much. And me sideline reporting? Wouldn't yes, that be a duo? Hey, I, I expect you to be sideline reporting by next year. <laughs> so I, that's all I got to say, okay? That's big high hopes for me. I appreciate it. Well, Illinois head coach Tyra Perry has been with the Illini since June of 2015. She has brought the softball team to the NCAA tournament three times in the last five years. Illini Sports Night Tatiana Perry spoke to Tyra about the Illinois team and the people who have inspired her throughout her coaching and playing career. Softball head coach Tyra Perry was hired at Illinois in June of 2015. Before coming to Illinois, Perry primarily stuck to the South. I didn't know a lot about Illinois. I was at Ball State, and I'm from the South. I'm from Louisiana. I played at LSU and, and Nickel State. Uh, my first job was at Birmingham Southern College, a small college in Alabama. My first assistant that I'd ever had was Allie Sartini, who played at Arkansas, and her sister Jana Sartini was an original member of the Illinois softball team. In order to be so successful, Perry drew from inspiration from coaches that she had met throughout her playing and coaching career. Uh, John Thompson, you know, he's basketball, but I grew up watching him coach, you know, at Georgetown. Dusty Baker, intrigued, always intrigued by him as a coach. Beetle Bailey, uh, Dwayne Bailey was a uh, coach at LSU uh, baseball. He was retired at the point in which I had gotten to LSU, but he took me under his wing and really taught me about hitting and most importantly, my dad. My dad is a longtime coach. He um, was a middle school coach and a high school coach, uh, coached various sports, was my softball coach in uh, the travel world. Most of all, Perry is grateful for the athlete she's able to work with. You know, in our league, we have traditional powerhouses. You know, we were like, well, why not us? You know, those guys started somewhere and believed that they could do it at some point. Tatiana Perry? Illini Sports Night. And one of my favorite parts of that story is, is our very own Tatiana Perry found out she's related to Tyra Perry, actually. Uh, a, a pretty big shocker there, Mariah. But, uh, always fun to kind of, you know, talk to some family members and, and find some new ones. Yes, that's why I got so entirely tripped up trying to intro that story. It was Perry this, Perry that, and I just got entirely true in my head. Also, their first names both start with T's, so I was trying to remember who I was exactly talking about. But standing next to me is our next um, anchor for Illini Sports Night, um, Gabby Hajduk, who has served as the DI sports editor for the past year. So you have plenty of experience. What are you looking towards as far as Illini Sports Night? Yeah, I think the biggest thing uh, that I got to do as sports editor was just learn about every sport on campus, which was so fun because, you know, you really only hear about basketball and football sometimes. So it's cool to kind of you know, dive into all the other sports, you know, gymnastics, both teams have really great programs, golf, tennis. So it was really just fun to do that as editor this past year. And the softball team too. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and you've seen so many teams, right? You've experienced so many things. What has been the best moment that you've been able to experience and actually be a part of? That's probably the toughest question I have to answer ever as a journalist. But I think the biggest, um, the coolest moment I've been a part of is this past basketball season, I actually got the privilege of going to Indianapolis and covering March Madness, covering the two games that Illinois basketball had. Obviously the Loyola game thought it was a better game than it was. <laughs> I think we all did, but it was really cool seeing Illinois um, basketball have one of their first wins in a really long time in the March Madness tournament against Drexel in that first game. So it was really cool to just be in Indy for that and experience the March Madness atmosphere. You know, you always win some and you lose some. Well, we're definitely <laughs> winning with these hosts coming in next fall. Patrick, what do you have over there? Yeah, last but certainly not least, we have Alec Bussey. Alec, uh, you've covered an array of sports, football, basketball, baseball. You know, what do you bring to this ISN team? First of all, thanks for having me. I think I bring a lot of energy to the show. It's something that I think you guys do a lot of really good work with. So I'm looking forward to adding to that. And I think I bring a lot of passion for sports and for journalism. I've always believed that you should have a greater passion for the stories you're telling than the journalism that you're, or than the sports. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's awesome. And, and you've covered all these sports before. Uh, I'm just curious too, 
you have any favorite moments that you've been able to cover? Certainly a lot has happened in the last three years. Yeah, so I think my favorite sporting moment I probably covered in the last year is probably the uh, Illini upsetting, I would probably say. Michigan uh, in the end of the season, obviously without Io DeSumo playing, it was a huge upset to beat Michigan the way they did. And Michigan obviously went really far in the NCAA tournament, so that was a really cool experience as well. And then obviously winning the Big Ten tournament was a really awesome thing to cover as well. Yeah, I got to say that Big Ten tournament was awesome. Well, moving on, I want to thank you guys for coming on and we're excited for next year. But we still have this year. It's now time for Check This Out, where we'll feature some fun, some sad, and some questionable tweets from all of our favorite Illinois sports meet social media accounts. He's so great. Yeah. All right. Illinois Northwestern coming in at number nine. This is great. So Mae Nelson with a pop up into foul her best Look Superman impression with this oh, diving catch. Her heroics were so good. It made Sports Center's oh, top ten goodness. at number eight. Number Alana eight. softball would go on to beat the Cats four to two. What a catch dive! I mean that that takes some energy and certainly hurt. Social, social. And let's. Social. Last but not least, we still have some show left, but be sure to follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also, make sure to watch our stories on YouTube and Vimeo. And since I'm finishing my master's program and will be graduating, this is my last show for Illini Sports Night. This show for me started off as quick hits, turned into my first experience producing, and now serving as the executive producer and co-host of the show. I've worked with the most amazing crew and couldn't have asked for a better experience and I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> well, being able to cover sports and doing it is something that I have a passion for. I've grown so much as a journalist and as a person through this show and I'm happy to be leaving the crew in what is hopefully uh, good hands uh, <laughs> with Tristan Kissick and um, Patrick producing in the fall. I can't wait to see how this show evolves, so this is my final goodbye to the show and to Richmond Studios. For the last time, for Patrick Catazone, I'm Ryan Guzman. Thanks for watching Illini Sports Night. Really, really led this team in every aspect, from scoring and just leadership to even defense. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and Patrick, I, you know, didn't warn you that I was going to ask you about this, but can I see a mock of your golf swing, please? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ready? Here we go. I got to really line it. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's more of me. Oh. I need some work. It's early in the season. Yeah, well, I think... I'm doing Greg Morale, and I took my Geritol this morning, and I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I promise I'm not going to comment on your age today, okay? Against Michigan State. I think that's the way to send a message, <laughs> but not ruin the... Uh, <laughs> the chemistry that they did develop. Understood. Anthony, as much as I agree with you, Alex, I, I like the point that you make. <laughs>